This is the rigging I use for filming my cartoons. As you can see, I put the scene here, and there's an arm here that the camera sits on that can be moved up and down, so I can have the camera at the right distance from the scene. But there's one thing missing from this, and that is lights. This is my messy workstation, with the computer that I do my video editing and my cartoons on, and on each side of the wall is where I had a fluorescent light that lit up the cartoons. Unfortunately, that wasn't the most effective way to do it, and the downside to my new webcam is that it doesn't like any lights running at 50 hertz. Get these annoying flickering bars on the picture. So this is what I plan to do. I'm going to put another board on the top of this, mount two fluorescent lights under that board, so there's plenty of lighting for the scene, and I'm going to make an inverter that powers the lights at a frequency that does not interfere with the camera. Now this is my original idea for an inverter circuit, and I designed it to power the lights at 60 Hz, which would be more compatible with the camera. Unfortunately it didn't work as good as I thought it would. It uses a 555 timer chip, and this control here is to control the frequency so I can fine, it, fine tune it to 60 Hz. This control here adjusts how much power gets into the transformer that powers the lights. And although this worked, it's nowhere near as efficient as I thought it would be. Well, this is the 555 part, and this is actually one of my previous projects that I've modified. This one has two transistors connected to the 555 to buffer the output, so should the output get shorted, it's not going to damage the chip. But it does work. I have it connected to this speaker so we can hear the output from it. And when I turn the power on, as you can hear, quite a nice healthy buzz there. And I can tune this to 60 hertz. That's about 70 hertz, and that's about 50 hertz. And here's the completed circuit, and this is pretty much where everything went asses up. Now, I have a transistor, which is a TIP3055, connected to the oscillator. And this is the variable resistor to control the voltage that gets into the transformer. Now I'm going to turn it on. I can already hear this transformer buzzing. And I've got a homemade amp meter connected to measure the current. Now as I bring the power up, we should see the fluorescent lights come to life. There we go. Getting something. Now, as you can see, we're getting quite a lot of current on the amp meter that's measuring almost 4 amps, and the lights are barely doing anything. So I'm going to have to rethink my strategy there, because I've got a very inefficient design. Right, well, I've connected my flyback driver back up to the transformer, and I've got this running at about 18 kilohertz. I just kept cranking the frequency up until I couldn't hear it anymore, and it seems that if I use high frequencies to drive the lights, it's much more efficient. That's only pulling about an amp, and the lights are quite bright. And I think I've got this output in pure square waves. If I turn the potentiometer this way, as you can see the amp starts to drop, and the lights get dimmer, until they go completely out. So I think that's outputting a very, very thin square wave at the moment. So as I increase the pulse width, the lights get brighter, I think that's on a pure 50-50 duty cycle now. If I keep increasing, as you can see, the amps go up. And the lights aren't as bright, so I think I've gone over the 50% duty cycle there. It's probably about 60 or something right now. So I'll back that off. The lights seem to be brightest about there, so I'd imagine that's the pure square wave again. So now I've got this set just the way I want it. I'm going to use this as the high frequency driver for the inverter. 
And for those of you interested, this is the schematic that I'm going to use. I found a transformer that takes the mains voltage and transforms it to about 6 volts and 23 volts. And immediately after that, you can see it gets rectified and smoothed. So across this capacitor here, we have between about 8 and 9 volts. And here I'll have about 30 volts. This is actually my bank of 10 1000 microfarad capacitors. And after that, there's a transformer that steps the voltage up to 1000 volts to power the tubes. Next along, there's the MOSFET that pulses the transformer so it can, you know, transform. And a protection diode to protect it from reverse voltage spikes. And that's all controlled by this TL494 chip, which is powered off this rectifier. Through this um, resistor here to smooth out any ripple. And I'm going to set the frequency to about 18 kilohertz, which I think is the physical limit of that transformer. And of course, here is the duty cycle adjust, which I'm going to set to 50%. So I'll get the most amount of power and should get nice bright lights. Just one thing I forgot to mention. You might have noticed that only one pin is connected to the wires. That's actually not a mistake in the schematic. It is going to be connected up that way. Doesn't matter which pin is connected up to the wires, just so long as one pin on each side of the tube is connected to a wire, it should work. Also, because of the way the circuit works, it's not going to need a starter or a ballast, so we don't need to worry about those. Okay, just been in the shed and cut out a nice big piece of MDF, the same size as the base of the uh, camera rigging. And this is where I'm going to put all the parts for the inverter. Right, well got all the parts that I'm going to use now. This is going to be the main transformer. Get about 23 volts out of these red wires here and about 6 volts out of these yellow wires. My soldering iron is making a bid for freedom. This is the transformer that's going to provide the 1000 volts for the fluorescent lights because when you use a mains transformer in reverse you'll get about 1000 volts out of it even though they're designed for 240. Here's the oscillator with all the non-essential parts taken out. Here's the capacitor and rectifier for the oscillator power supply. And here's the rectifier and capacitors for the MOSFET and transformer. Speaking of which, here's the MOSFET, which is an IRF540 and a high frequency diode. Got a switch here which I took off a lamp. And this is a heatsink that I made from some aluminium that I have laying around. Or aluminum as some of you say. Some of you might think this is quite elaborate for just lighting up a couple of fluorescent tubes. The thing is, you know how touchy that camera can be. So this is going to power those lights at a really high frequency. Hope I've got enough capacitors here to get rid of any ripple that the camera might see. Anyway, I think it's time to wire this all up. Well, here it is with all the complicated electronics built. And it is on right now. I'm going to connect the amp meter between the transformer and the MOSFET. Make sure it's not taking an abnormally large amount of current. Okay, well, the needle hardly moves, so it's not taking much current at the moment. Obviously when I connect the fluorescent tubes up it will, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Right, well, I have the tubes connected now. I'm going to get out of the way so you can see what's going on. Gonna turn the power back on, connect up the drain. And yes, we have light. It's not very bright, but it is working. Might have to readjust the oscillator. Could even send Morse code through this thing. Not that I know, of course, because I don't. Just 
needed to tweak the oscillator a little bit. And now they're pretty bright. It's pulling about an amp from the MOSFET. I'm going to let this run for a little while and observe how hot this gets. So I'll know whether I need to use a fan or not. And then I'll put it all together. Well, I've run this for about 10 minutes. The tubes got sort of a little bit warm. So did the transformer and the MOSFET did get quite hot, but I don't think it was I don't think it was anywhere in the range of dangerously hot, so I think we should be okay. So I just got to um put this on the rest of my animation station. Well, I think if there was a reward for the most elaborate light, this would get it. Provides plenty of light for the scene that's being shot. Well, scene Zerk, uh, because this isn't the only one I'm going to do. Talking a bit soft because Mum's in the other room watching the most obnoxious and stupid program it's ever been my misfortune to be exposed to. Talking about Family Guy, it sucks. But anyway, hate that. This seems to work pretty good. This is with the light on, and that's with the light off. Now let's see how good that looks in the webcam. And we should be recording from the webcam. Now I'm only recording at 320 by 240 for quickness. I'm going to put the webcam onto the rigging, or into the rigging, or whatever you want to call it. Looks like Ricky's arm is... Ricky's dislocated his shoulder there. And my arm's gone completely missing. Don't know where that is. Anyway, I'm going to turn the lights... I'm going to turn the main lights off and turn the internal light on. And we'll see how well this works. And this is with the high frequency fluorescent lights. And as you can see, pretty good picture. With no flickering. Let's just compare that to the light from the main lights. Well, you can see for yourself. All in all, I think this is a 100% successful project. Well, that's it for this episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Remember, if you like these videos, feel free to subscribe, you'll be glad you did. And tell your friends about Cool Dude Clem and his Electronic Workshop. And, if you want to see the previous episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, click on the box on the right. Or, if you want to see more of my videos, click on me right now to visit my channel. That's just about it for now. I'll see you next time. Well, I won't see you next time. But anyway, until next time, goodbye.